So, we need to cover some more logic features, yes? Yet more logic features, as I've put it here on my slide, okay? Uh, I want to get to some MIDI editing features, but I also want to make sure you know how to import uh, video into your logic session because that's integral to completing the homework assignment, yes? Okay. Uh, and as I discovered this morning when I tried to check out these te uh, this technique of importing and exporting video, uh, it's not obvious how you export the video back. Uh, and in fact, what I previously showed you about switching to 64-bit mode actually disables exporting video. So we're going to have to dive back into switching it back into 32-bit mode. So we'll, we'll cover that today. But I want to get to this MIDI editing stuff that I've had on the list for probably two days now, and I want to make sure that we can uh, talk through some of that, okay? So I'm going to start a new project, okay? Uh, I'm going to start a nice empty project, okay? Uh, I'm going to create three software instruments. Go ahead. Great, okay? Uh, and I probably, from the beginning, want to have my video in this project, okay? Uh, that would be a good idea, a good thing to do, uh, to ha is to have the, that video in the uh, project right from the beginning so I can work with the video side by side, okay? So, importing the video is actually pretty uh, easy. If you go down to, if you go to the file menu and go to the option that says open movie, oddly enough, okay? You should be able to navigate your hard drive and select the movie that you've downloaded, okay? I've picked up one of my uh, travel videos from before, okay, from the last project, just to have something, okay? Uh, I would recommend that if you did, have not selected your video yet, that you download something short that you can practice this process, okay, of importing a video. Once you've found your video on the hard drive, click open, okay? And there it is in a nice window, okay? You can, let's see, can you resize this? You can resize it if it's taking too much of your screen away. Is everybody able to open and import their video? Okay, so two things. Uh, one, uh, Amanda was experiencing a problem where it was just kind of gray once she imported it. As soon as you start playing, it should fill in your video for you, okay? Uh, Maisha's seeing this screen up here. So does anybody else have this little movie up here? Okay, it looks like if you just... Oh, look at that. Wow. And mine went away, too. Okay. So do this for me. Okay. Maisha, if you've got the, pro, pro, uh, the, video, the movie up here, okay, go right here where it says Global Tracks and click this arrow so it's down. You should now see a video track. And if you just simply double click on the video, it'll pop up in its own window. So I've got my first uh, little four bars here. I'm going to record something. I don't know what. Uh, let's see. I'll just do a simple scale, maybe. Okay. I'm going to pick a, a synthesizer, ES1. Okay. Uh, and I've talked to you and I've emphasized twiddling these knobs, yes? Uh, changing the knobs and understanding what these waveform pictures mean, what ADSR stands for, those sorts of things. Uh, I've intentionally left out telling you about presets, but some of you may have actually discovered this, okay? My reason for leaving that out is because I don't want you to just rely on just the presets, okay? Because that's one way to make sure that you sound like everybody else, okay? You actually want to get in here and customize the presets, okay? But if you're someone that uh, doesn't want to start from just a, a blank slate, you want to kind of jump start the process, click where it says default right here in your plugin, and you should, in this drop-down list, have a, a nice list of presets that are available for you. Okay? So, I don't know. I'm going to go with a classic synth string sound, because that sounds interesting to me. Okay, let me plug in my sound to the speaker so you guys can hear it. Okay, did I turn on my sound? Yes, I did. Okay. Trying it one more time. Oh, it's, it's so realistic and lifelike. Okay, good. So, I've got my classic synth sound, and you know, uh, maybe I want to make this oscillator a little more buzzy sounding. It's got a nice swell to it as well. Okay. So, I'm, uh, I'm a minimal composer. I want to rewind this to the beginning. Uh, I'm going to actually 
let's see. Just start recording for like four bars, and I probably will even loop this, okay? This is something I didn't cover last time when I was recording, but you can engage the loop function while you're recording so that you're recording the same four bars over and over again, and Logic will happily let you add notes as you go along, okay, through that loop, okay? So I've got my classic synth sound. I've got my four-bar loop. I'm going to hit record. Okay, so I've got that note. Maybe I want to go to a different key. So you see what's happening here? I'm basically recording the same four bars over and over again. So I've got some. I intentionally put some notes in there that I might want to fix. Okay, because what I want to show you now is once you've got MIDI into Logic, okay, either by recording something kind of lengthy or recording a short little four bars over and over again, and you can actually get in here and start editing this. Okay, uh, this is where screen sets can be very helpful for you because I might want to leave this screen set here with my synthesizer so I can. Uh, make some changes to the, it, and I, but I might want to also have a second screen set where I actually start to edit this uh, MIDI information. How do I switch the screen set? The numbers. the numbers, yes. Okay, I can pick any number and I can make that the, a new screen set. Okay, so if this is screen set one, okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit two. Okay, everybody see how the windows kind of reset for me? I can now set up my MIDI editing environment the way I like it. Okay. Um, now, you can get to editing this MIDI region by simply clicking where it says Piano Roll down here at the bottom. Okay, That integrates it into the Arrange window. Logic, I think circa version 9, int uh, introduced this integrated Arrange window where everything is all in this available in the same window. Okay, If you're someone that wants to see a separate window for your Piano Roll, you can go up here to the Window menu and drop down where it says Piano Roll. And just as an aside, if, if you ever hear me refer to it as the matrix editor, the matrix editor is the old name for this thing, okay? So, uh, again, old habits die hard. So if you hear me talking about the matrix editor, I'm talking about this window right here, okay? But the reason it's called the piano roll is it has the piano keyboard on the side here, and we have our notes depicted here as well, okay? So if I turn off record mode, I can get to the, the transport still down here, okay? The nice thing about having a separate piano roll window is I can see things a lot bigger. They can take up more of the screen, okay? And again, the screen set, I, if I need, want to go back to adjusting my video or my synthesizer, I'm just a keystroke away from that, okay? So flipping back over to the piano roll here, okay? Um, I can play this. I'm still in loop mode down here. That's what this green button means. Okay. What are some problems with this, performance-wise? Go ahead, I can take it. Notes aren't connected very well. Yeah. It's not. It's minimalist. It's not really very in time. Ah, okay. In time, yes. Okay, having things on the beat, having things in line with the pulse that's going on. Okay, you you heard that metronome kind of denoting the pulse, and the metronome only plays while you're recording. Okay. Uh, you should, especially if you're a minimal composer, you should be recording to the metronome, okay? So you know what the time is, okay? That's a reason for setting your tempo ahead of time, okay? And I've alluded, to, I've already showed you how to change the BPM yesterday, yes? Uh, I mean, th Tuesday, yes? Uh, if you're someone that wants to change the, the I, I've mentioned this 4-4 and changing that, okay? It's just as simple as double-clicking right there where it says 4-4, and if you want to have 5-4 be your time signature, you can do that as well. And if you're not sure what that means... Don't worry about it. 
happening. Um, okay, so the timing is off on these things. This note is late. This one is a little bit late. This one is a little bit later. This one's actually early if you see where this four is, okay? Um, so I would like to fix these, okay? I could go in here with the pencil tool, remember, uh, the pointer tool, excuse me, and click and drag each one of these, or I could do it in a more global fashion, okay? Through a process that's called quantization. Now you've heard that term quantization before, yes? When we were back when we were talking about digital audio and you were reading about how digital audio is encoded, anybody have a sense of what quantization means? Anybody remember that word? No? You don't remember it other than the fact that I told you you should remember it? Is this no, what are you doing, Jake? No, maybe? No. What's quantization? Well, in this case, it would be you pick a value that it will snap the notes. Ah. <clears throat> yes, so the, the snapping is what I want to get at, okay? In digital audio, I talked about how values can't be in between steps on the, on the, uh, the vertical ladder, right? They have to be either here or here, and they have to snap to one of those things. That's quantization in digital audio, okay? And it shows up, and it can create artifacts called quantization noise. The same term has of this kind of snapping effect, either here or here, can be applied to MIDI. Okay, I'm actually gonna let me zoom out a little bit so I can see this entire four bars all at the same time. Okay, everybody see the timing problems in here? Okay, and you can hear it uh, as as it plays through. Okay, I can quantize these notes so that they appear perfectly on beats without having to adjust them one at a time. If I simply select all of them, okay, which I can do either by dragging the pointer or if I use the Apple A keystroke, selects all of them, or Command A. Um, if I go up here, okay, there's a menu that has this very inconspicuous label of off 3840, okay? Yeah, you see how it says quantize value? If I Look at this drop-down list. Okay, these are values that it can quantize to. That logic will cause these notes to snap to. Okay, um, now one one means a whole note. That means every four beats. One two means a half note. Okay, uh, and so depending on what I select, I will get different uh, results. Okay, uh, let me so so for instance, if I pick one twelfth. Okay, it's going to snap to the nearest 12th note, which might not fix the problem for me. Okay, it fixed these, but it didn't fix this first one over here, yes? Okay, so I'm just doing that as an example. If I know that the shortest value I played was a half note, I can select half note and be assured that it's going to snap to the nearest half note. Okay, see how it fixed the timing of this first note? Okay, so this is one way that you can take your performance on a MIDI keyboard and fix the timing, cause things to kind of snap to certain values, to certain minimum values, and lock into place so that the timing is more perfect. Okay? You selected the, um, <clears throat> like the whole note, the one out of one. Yeah. It doesn't change the. Well, watch what happens. Okay, so I've got this B flat over here, right? Which is on the third note, okay? If I select a whole note, watch what happens to it. Put it to the earliest. Okay. Yeah. Because this is the minimum value that is allowed, the minimum pulse, value of the pulse that's allowed, sometimes it might snap to the, uh, a, a different value than I actually want, okay? So the best guideline, if you're familiar with musical note values, okay, is to pick the shortest note that you know you supposedly played, okay? I know I played a half note as my shortest, uh, uh, my shortest duration, so therefore I pick half note and it snaps to that value, okay? Um, okay, did everybody see that? Uh, okay, quantize is very handy, and you can actually turn it right back off. Well, no, it's not going to let me do that, okay? I can turn it off by simply going back to off, okay? That's a that, that by the way is a reason for not just hand moving your mini notes and using the quantize values if you want to fix this stuff because quantize actually preserves your original performance. Okay, it preserves the timing. So you can actually get some interesting effects by 
quantizing it sometimes, not quantizing it other times, okay? If you're not as off as I am, okay? But I'm pretty off on that first note, okay? So I'm gonna switch it to half note. Okay, that's quantization, okay? What about, uh, this first note is rather loud, yes? Okay, maybe I want to have this one be a little bit softer. That's where my escape tool toolbar comes in handy, okay? If you remember, uh, velocity is the, the recording of how hard or how quickly I press the key, okay? Um, and that relates to how loud the note is, okay? So if I click on the velocity tool, I can now lower this. Ooh, everybody see what ha what's happening? Yeah, because I have them all selected, it's going to change the velocity value of all of them, okay? So I'm going to click undo, because I only wanted to change this first one, okay? If I click in some sort of gray space here, I can now click on the... Okay, and this is where the colors come in handy. Now that this is in kind of the same color family, I know that this is a similar... Okay, these are still kind of loud, so maybe I want to lower this one. Okay, so let me play this. Oh. Okay, so any questions about velocity tool? Okay, velocity tool is very handy for shaping your performance, and especially um, you can fix your keyboard performance okay, by notes that kind of stick out. Um, or if you're someone that uses the caps lock keyboard, you may notice on the caps lock keyboard, everything is the same velocity value. That's just as bad as having things that are the wrong velocity value and kind of stick out, okay. You will create a more uh, human performance if you add in velocity variations, okay. Yeah? And just to say out loud, the caps lock keyboard does have velocities on it. Oh. It has... Um, Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, there is. So it is possible to get, but it usually, yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it you can. You 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 still will get. You will typically get a passage that's all at the same volume, not the kind of velocity variations that you get, the kind of ebb and flow, the the groove, if you will. Okay, uh, that you get out of a keyboard performance, out of a live performance. Okay. Um, okay, so that's quantization. Let me talk a little bit about the transform menu because that's one of my favorite places to go, okay? I'm going to select all these notes, okay? And buried in the functions menu, there's a submenu called transform. There's a lot of things here you might want to get to know. In fact, this is probably where, you know, where I spend 80, 90% of the time when I'm working in logic because what it lets you do is take a little bit of MIDI data and change it to get variations in it. Okay, remember we were talking about process, okay, uh, and defining a process as a, an experimental composer? These transformations can be a way to uh, create a lot of variation in your piece, okay? So that's in the piano roll menu, functions, transform. And just look at some of these. You've got things like double speed. You've got things like half speed. Some of you, I think it was Matt last time, you were asking me how to change the tempo of just one uh, MIDI part, not the overall project. This would be how you do it, okay? There's m double speed and half speed, but once you get in here, you can actually, where to go? Ah, this mul these multipliers, you can set these to whatever value your heart desires, basically, okay? So two is going to give you half speed, but 2.168 or whatever mathematical constant you want to use, you good experimental composers, you, okay, will give you all sorts of variations in that, okay? So messing around with these values is, is one way to get op options, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and select and operate. Everybody see how this is now half speed? Okay, everything's twice as long as it was before. Uh, and if I play it, okay. The tempo of the project didn't change, but the tempo of this passage did. Yeah, play around with this menu, especially if you're in the experimental c category. You can get a lot of variation out of various things, okay? And remember that each uh, instance of the MIDI uh, region can be varied independently, okay? So just to recap that, I'm going to go to the third screen set here. 
everybody sees that I've got this one variation here. Okay, this one MIDI region. Okay, if I'm going to escape, go back to my pointer tool. If I option click drag this down to another track, okay, and I double click that, this is now a different, different unique MIDI region. Okay, and I can use function transform, I don't know, reverse position. Okay, select and operate. Good. Okay, and now if I, well, I, I probably need to pick an instrument. Anybody have a preference? Shout one out here. Nobody has a preference? ES2. What now? ES2, okay. This one's even more fun. Uh, I don't know. Let's use a synth keyboard, classic house organ. Awesome. Yes, you're allowed to use this one. This one is synthesis, okay. So I'm going to close this, okay. Uh, just so we're clear, I'll play this. Lovely, okay. Okay, so I, I basically copied it to a second track, I reversed it, and now they're playing against each other, okay? Okay, so everybody see how making copies and then transforming those copies can give you a lot of mileage, okay? Um, what's one thing I might want to do to reduce confusion here? Because they're both green, they're both classic synth string. Change color, and what was the other one, Alex? Or Color, okay, yeah, I can color code these of like this is my reversed one, so I can make this one, I don't know, pink. There's a lovely salmon color here, okay, that is very popular with the kids these days. Uh, I can also, in my tool palette, text tool, click on this one, and this is my reversed, okay, so I can reinforce it, okay, so don't forget those color tools, that text tool, okay, so I've got this lovely reversed classic house organ and my original, okay? Uh, so that's the transform menu. I really can't go through all the transform menu because there are so many options there. Um, but uh, my, my only uh, advice is to play around with it, okay? Let me see here. Other functions you might want to get uh, behind here. Where to go? Note events, okay? Under functions, Note events, okay. There are a number of things like note overlap correction, force legato, okay. So there's this gap over here, right? Maybe I don't want that gap. Maybe I want it to actually extend. If I force legato, oh, let's see, appear like chords. Delete chords or shorten them? No, I want to shorten them, okay. See what it did there? It took these overlapping notes and now it made it so that there's a short note and then a long note, okay. Let me undo that. I'm going to go back to my non-reversed one because that's, no, I don't like, see, I'm old-fashioned. I like having a big piano roll. There we go. Okay. Uh, so like right in here, let me see this. Maybe I don't want these two notes to sound simultaneously. Maybe I want one to sound and then the other one to sound. So if I do this and I go to uh, note events, Note overlap cor correction. See how it fixes that for me? Okay. I can also do this. And I can go to note events, force legato. And you see how it extends that first note so it ends exactly when the, the next note begins. Okay. So that's another handy menu in the function menu, the note events menu. Okay. You can get a lot of mileage out of transform, a lot of mileage out of note events. Okay. Uh, something else I love to do, since we're talking about me today, that's a joke, people. Okay, if you're in the arrange window, select a MIDI region, and then go to split. Oh, where'd it go? They moved it on me. I hate when they do this. Separate MIDI events by note pitch. Okay, there it is. So they moved it from the split menu to MIDI separate MIDI events by note pitch, okay? Everybody sees that I played different pitches, right? Okay? On the keyboard, okay? That's the, the, it's the vertical height on, on the piano roll, okay? If I split by note pitch, watch what happens. I get, yes, I get a different MIDI region for every pitch that I played, okay? So this is now just, 
Uh, this is the original, it looks like. No, oh, they're all selected. Okay. This is now just the G. This is now just the B flat, which some of you might be suspect about including that because it's not really in the key, but. Are you um, just looking over to the keyboard that's on the side of the piano roll to determine the note? Yeah, right here. So this is a B flat. You just are looking on it. Yep. Uh, you can, if you also float over it, it should tell you eventually. No. Yeah, it'll play it. It's not. Yeah, it's not telling me what it is. But okay. But what's nice about splitting by pitch? Now I can take if I have an extended passage. Now I can take all my B flats and have a synthesizer just play those. I can take all my A's and have a synthesizer just play those. I can take all my G's and I can drop in an octave and have a bass synthesizer doubling those things. Okay, so you see how these transformations that you can you can start to play around with. Okay, um, that are really things that are are unique to working with MIDI in a DAW like this. Okay. Um, so I can now, th I mean, I, okay, so everybody gets that in theory, okay? Uh, I don't have time for the hyper editor because I want to skip over to talking a little bit about processing plugins, okay? You remember when we were dealing with Pro Tools, I, I showed you two processing plugins, EQ and compression, okay? Um, you do have the ability to add in processing plugins here. I don't want you to go off the deep end, but if you want to get back into processing plugins and if you are comfortable with using processing plugins I don't want to forbid you from using them okay so the way to do that is here in the mix window you see where it says inserts there's also something that says EQ okay if you double click where it says EQ it's going to open up an EQ which look, should look somewhat familiar from the Pro Tools version of EQ yes okay we have this uh, 20 to 20 K that should sound familiar yes okay by this point in the semester Okay, uh, I also have a zero line here and I can move things into the positive region or the negative region. Okay, so if I want to boost my highs, all I have to do is come over here and turn them up. Okay, I have no idea where I just, I just added this to my classic synth string. Okay, great. Okay, um, so this is the kind of basic generic EQ where I, I already probably have a lot of highs. I maybe don't want to do that. Maybe I want to do something whoop, like this, pull down my lows and give it kind of a... Right here, all that changes. So undo. Okay. Not quite as obvious. Maybe because it's only on this one note. Okay. So EQ is an option for you. You also, if you click on one of these empty rectangles, you have a, an array of effects that at your disposal. Delays can be very fun, especially echoes, especially tape delays. Okay. I encourage you to explore this, but if you're timid, if you're at all shy about getting into processing, you know, stay away from this. Focus on the MIDI, okay? The MIDI exploration is what you're being graded on, what you're supposed to be focusing on this project, but I just want to point it out here as an option, okay? Um, we'll dive more deeply into processing next time uh, with the next project, okay? Automation is another thing, okay? You remember from in Pro Tools I showed you how to get to the volume line and change that, okay? In Logic, it's... Uh, You'll notice there's no drop-down list here where I can get to automation, okay? But I can, okay, if I select a track, hit the A key, it brings up the automation. Hit the A key again, it hides it from you, okay? So A is how you get to automation in Logic, okay? And you can automate, volume is the first option, right? So if I go to my Pro Tools palette here, uh, excuse me, my uh, Escape palette, uh, pencil tool can be handy because I can add points using the pencil tool and then I can use the pointer tool to actually change points so now this is gonna fade in and I can have it fade in over four bars okay hit reverse okay so that's volume automation I can also automate panning and this is where it gets this is how, the, another kind of how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go okay and if it's, the answer is not very, then turn off your ears right now, okay? You can use earmuffs, right? Okay. Uh, every knob, every option in your synthesizer is something that you can automate in Logic, okay? So if you want your attack to go from really short to really long, you can actually automate that. 
usually the trickiest thing is finding which option that is in the interface, okay? But hidden in this automation, it's not just volume, it's not just panning. You'll see here, every time you add a plugin, it adds a sub list here, and every option in that plugin is something you can automate and change over time, okay? You can go really deep into this, okay? So play around with that, okay? Um, last thing I need to show you is how to export this project. So I've got my, let's see, do I, did I put a, where's my video at? Global tracks. Oh yeah, and the sound, the sound from video. Ah, okay. Okay, so here's my movie. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna do much, okay, so uh, the length of your movie is gonna determine the length of your project when you bounce, okay? So uh, I'm gonna override that actually for mine because I don't wanna sit here and, and bounce a minute. So again, if you scroll to the end of the timeline, there's gonna be this little square Okay, which is the end marker of your project for bouncing purposes. I'm going to move that up so that I just bounce these four bars with my video. Okay, now do me a favor, real quick. Go to the file menu, and do you have all of these options related to movie? You probably are missing this export audio to movie. Yes. Okay. That's the option that for some reason when you're in 64-bit mode disappears. I don't know why. I haven't been able to get to the bottom of it. But the easiest thing to do is to uh, restart logic in 32-bit mode. So if you've been working on your project like I have, because I want to save this masterpiece that I've just created here. Okay. March 21st. Great. Logic. Save it on the desktop. Okay. I'm going to save. I'm going to quit logic. And remember, you can't just close the project. You have to actually quit logic. Either go file. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Logic Pro. Quit. Okay. Or the keystroke is command Q. Quit logic. Okay. And who remembers? Where did we go to change from 32-bit 32 32-bit mode to 64-bit mode? Yeah. Go to application. So you want to click on your hard drive. Go to Applications and find Logic Pro. This might want to be the last thing you do right before you export the project, okay? It's not something you have to do all along the way, but for my purposes, I want to show you how to do this, okay? You want to select Logic Pro in the Applications folder, and I did app, Apple I or Command I, okay? And you want to make sure this box that says Open in 32-bit mode is checked. Once you check that, close this, and then I'm going to go back to my project and I'm going to open it back up. Okay. I'm now in 32 bit mode and I can export audio to movie. Okay. Now, you asked about how to strip audio off of the movie. Okay. You first have to import the audio from the movie. And my, mine has actually no audio track. Okay. But if you have a video with an audio track, you have to first use this option in the file menu that says import audio from movie. It'll pull the audio off the movie, put it on audio track, and then you just hit mute on that track. What now? Or delete it. Yeah, either way. Then when you do the export, it won't add that audio back in. Okay? So I'm going to do export audio just so you see what this looks like. And this will be on the video for you guys to recap when you actually get around to exporting this. Okay? So you want to have options... Uh, let's see. Linear PCM is actually going to make your video bi bigger than it probably needs to be. So I'll be honest, you can probably just drop this down to AAC. Okay? Yes, you definitely want to preserve stereo because you're going to do lots of good things. Remember all that mixing stuff we did last time with panning and changing the volume? That's all in play here, okay? So if you've got a stereo project, you definitely want to preserve that with the stereo option, okay? Uh, this is a, a decent target bit rate. Feel free to bounce this up if you know what you're doing, okay? But 128 will get you there, okay? Hit OK. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. I'm going to save it to the desktop, and you'll notice it's in this .mov file. Did you say 44.1? Yeah, 44.1. Uh, logic is a, you'll find that Logic is a lot more forgiving with things like sample rate and uh, bit depth and uh, also hardware settings. I, I'm assuming no, not many of you have had hardware issues with Logic because it's, it's pretty friendly, okay? So here's my wonderful... Wow.
I'm just contemplating the meaning of life, watching my video here. Okay. Oh, it looks like it actually it. It bounced the whole thing. So be careful of that, okay? Make sure your video is as long as you need it, okay? But you see how it actually took my audio, stuck it on the video. Now I've got a movie file that I can upload to YouTube with my audio composition. Yes? Can you shorten your video like you can your audio clip? In uh, not in Logic. You need to shorten it. You need to make sure it's the length you want it before you get into Logic, okay? How do you take off the soundtrack that's like by default? That, that's what I just was saying. You need to import the audio and then mute that track. Okay. I'll talk to you in a minute, okay? Don't forget your thing for Friday, your inspiration track. You can either email that to me or tweet that to me, okay? I'll see you guys next Tuesday.